from 1985, I watched Life Force. I watched this on Tubi TV, the free streaming app. There are some commercials. Um, you know, but they have some really obscure films on there that I just couldn't find streaming elsewhere. Life Force is a hot mess. This is a Toby Hooper film that looks to try to cash in on whatever trend they possibly can. One of the writers, Dan O'Bannon, I, I think he was a writer, co-writer of Alien. There is some, uh, there is some Alien to this, but it's a canon film. It comes across cheap and half-assed, though. When I say cheap, a canon film cheap that has a lot of people, that has sets and locations and you know room for extras and mayhem is totally different than the kind of cheap we get out of a movie today. You just bear that in mind. Yeah, most of the effects look pretty ass. A few of them are not so bad. A few of the creature effects are not that bad. I think... Um, Ah, oh, shit, I should probably have looked this up, but I think they ha they actually had a decent uh, creature effects guy on this. Uh, but this is the story of space vampires coming to Earth and taking over the world. Yeah, just the fear of aliens taking over the world, but also what if they were vampires, but vampires were always around, and some of them may have been on Earth before, but they were actually always from space. The movie doesn't seem to know what it wants to do. In fact, this is the opposite of how a movie would work today. Because today they'd be like, okay, your first movie, as with Alien, is the discovery of the creatures. And you learn what they can do, and you're out in space, and you battle them in space, and you kill them in space. Or do you? Second movie, they get to Earth, you have the battle on Earth. You, know, you try to franchise it out, right? This... All in one movie. We got some, like, uh, space shuttle, international crew, finds some derelict spacecraft, goes aboard, finds these giant bats, tries to bring one back for inspection, and there's also some three well-preserved humanoid creatures, two naked guys and a, and a naked chick with a pretty good rack. Played by Matilda May. Introducing Matilda May as the almost never wears clothes girl. They call her space girl in the credits. So, we lose contact with the crew that took these people in. And they I guess they it's revealed eventually through... One of them survived. He, it, this is convoluted and, and, and a mess, I realize. One of them survived, but he shows up in the middle of the movie, and uh, he tries to warn the people of Earth, but they, the space, the the bodies, it's like out of nowhere, they're all, they, they just go straight to dissecting the bodies, and they're trying to dissect the presumed dead space girl, but she wakes up, and she manipulates people, and she gives them passion or something, like, they want to do her, but... She just sucks their life out. And they suck people's, like, souls or some garbage. But, but then they turn into, like, dehydrated zombies who then have to do the same thing to spread the process. But they don't have the same powers as she does. But she can put her, her soul or something in other bodies if she so chooses... So she leaves the facility and could be anybody. And it's like, oh, great, she has clothes. Or she, she put herself in another body. We, we have to find out where she is. Oh, well, this guy who survived the onslaught in the, in the spaceship has some telekinetic power with him. He can detect her. He, he can understand where she's at. So much bullshit. Oh, God. It, I mean, it hurts my head to think about this. So, they come across this doctor played by Patrick Stewart, which is honestly the reason why I watched this. I thought, well, what would it be like to see Patrick Stewart, 1985 movie? He's, he's in here for maybe 15 minutes. 
but it turns out he had a part of her soul in him, and this uh, SAS colonel and the the space guy are are chasing them, uh, ch- trying to track down what this whole situation is. But the other bodies that of the two naked guys had been shot to shit and blown up, but they hadn't been destroyed apparently because the only way to take them out. And though we never saw them get up again and do anything, the only w- way to take them out is to stab them with uh, a stake through the heart, as one of the doctors figured out by chance, I guess. Uh, I mean, yeah, okay, so we got one of them, and then there's a five, another one, but we needed a scene of them coming to after being shot up in the in this uh, laboratory earlier. Never got that. A whole lot of blood comes flying out of uh, Patrick Stewart in this helicopter they had him transported along with this other guy, and it, it forms Matilda May, but she's all bloody, and then she disappears. And it's like, well, what the hell's going on? Now, all of a sudden, all of London has been d- destroyed by vampire zombie space aliens. It's like this weird amalgamation of everything. So there's like total chaos in the streets. People's souls are getting sucked up into space to the giant umbrella satellite dish of the derelict ship that is close by because of a comet. Yeah, shit. The the astronaut guy reveals that he was the one tempted by naked space girl to kill off his own crew or, or do things to sabotage the mission and let her escape and that he has to stop her so then he gets he tries to hook up with her and she's she says that he was a vampire the whole time or he was always one of them but if that's the case wouldn't he be sucking souls out wouldn't he have done that before if if she needs to do that to survive and then the SAS guy throws like a, a sword down to to him, and they uh, spa- astronaut guy stabs himself and stabs her in the process, and then all is good, I I suppose. They go back to space. They they get stabbed, but then they get put in their their chambers, which were moved it away anyway. So how did those things get there? And they just like teleport to their. Cha- it's the stupidest shit you'll ever see. Like, look, there's some decent effects here when people are getting dehydrated. But this movie is the most scattershot nonsense. There's no rules to it. Sometimes somebody will show up and they'll just be like sweaty or coughing. And it's like, oh wait, they, they're, they're a zombie. They're a zombie vampire alien. How do you know? How did they get to them? How does this shit spread? I mean, they they could be in a perfectly isolated area, and then all of a sudden somebody has the, the sickness. Uh, I don't know why it turned into total chaos either. Like, she was laying low as uh, some chick in Ireland, it looked like. It, it, I don't... Nothing makes sense. This movie is ass. Yeah, perfectly sums up what happened with canon. Uh, I, I mean, it's bad enough. You're, you're just kind of... Patrick Stewart should be grateful he was he didn't ruin his career. I guess you don't want to be the star of a complete shit movie. You can show up. You can be in the theater. You can have the chance for people to see you 30 feet high. Okay, go for that. But you don't want to be the star of something that sucks like this. So with that in mind, I guess Patrick Stewart is able to walk away. That's why I say if you're an aspiring actor or actress, just do the little roles in movies. Screw commercials. Well, commercials are okay. But you're, for the most part, you want little parts in big Hollywood movies that are going to be in theaters. That's where you start to become endearing and people people see you as the scene stealer eventually and then you get the starring roles and that's how you do it. D- don't do TV. There's no money there, nobody watching. Streaming stuff, 
crapshoot. But Hollywood big budget movies, something that can get in theaters with a national wide release, that's where you want to put it. Oh, Life Force. Uh, one out of four stars.